Most of the time, I leave my moth trap to just do its work overnight. However, last night I decided to check from my bedroom window uh, to see if there was anything at all notable. To my surprise, there was what looked like a oak beauty sitting in the trap. Just to check, I rushed outside and to my amazement, over the next half an hour, I managed to see 20 plus moths flying about the trap. This is absolutely unprecedented for this time of year, so I'm really excited to find out if even more moths have joined overnight. This moth is one of the oak beauties. They've been abundant in our trap this morning, with at least 10, and probably even more. We're really lucky to get these uh, beautiful moths visiting our trap, uh, possibly because there's quite a lot of deciduous woodland around. Despite their name, they are not in fact restricted to oak trees, um, however, I suppose it does help to have a few around, and I suspect that ours are probably bred on those. This moth is a March moth. Doesn't sound very interesting, doesn't look particularly interesting either. However, honestly, it is quite interesting, because I know for a fact that this is a male, because the females are wingless, which is known as apterus, uh, and they'll climb up the trunks of trees at night to try and attract a male down to mate. The oak beauties and the march moths were the two most common species in the trap last night, and this is third in the rankings. It is Torchicodes autonella. Well, at least I think that's how you pronounce it. You don't hear Latin spoken too often, uh, so that's a rough estimate of the name. Um, and it looks quite nondescript, quite similar to the march moth, where it does have a paler first half, leading to a, a darker second half, um, which is separated by a quite distinct border. This moth is a common Quaker and can be one of the most common moths in a trap at this time of year. However, it seems we've only caught the one today. It's quite similar to some of the other members in its genus, uh, the Orthosia genus, I think. Um, however, it has large, clear cut upper oval and kidney marks on the sides, which I think are technically known as the, stima the stigmata. Uh, and a pale band that runs across the forewing below them. I almost missed this little guy as he was resting on a patio quite far away from the moth trap. I know it's a guy because the females are flightless, like the march moth that we saw earlier. It's called the dotted border and it's identified by the row of dots running along the bottom of the wings, although these can be very hard to see in the dark forms that do occur in this species. A clouded drab with an oak beauty keeping it company. I have to say, on the first view, it does look quite drab. But there are so many beautiful intricacies. This is a Hebrew character, another very abundant spring moth being found from February to May uh, in almost any habitat, so do look out for it. It's named after the black mark on the forewing, which apparently looks like a Hebrew character, although I'm not well versed enough in Hebrew to confirm this. This little moth is, I think, a small Quaker, a relative of the common Quaker we had earlier, although the kidney and oval marks on the wings are much less distinct, and the half of the kidney patch closest to the abdomen is darker than the other half, which leads me to think that this is a small Quaker. It's also smaller in size, unsurprisingly, to the common Quaker, and to the very similar blossomed underwing as well. This is probably the highlight of my moth trapping night. I think it's a small brindled beauty, which is classed as local, a moth found in less than 300 sites nationally. I don't think I've trapped it before, so it's probably a lifer for me, and it's great to know that it's breeding somewhere nearby. This is the last moth species that I managed to identify this morning in the trap. I think it's a chestnut, although I'm not entirely sure because it seems quite worn. The chestnut is a very interesting moth for me, because it has such a long flight period, which stretches out throughout the whole of the winter, from late September to May. It's really quite amazing that just one generation can keep flying for so long. That's a lie, actually. I think this is my final moth of the day. A brindled pug. Well, at least that's what I assume it is. Pugs are notoriously difficult to identify. However, this is one of only two species that flies in March the other one being the double striped pug. It's not usually the best idea to identify moths solely on their flight season, as you can get individuals uh, flying particularly early or late, usually depending on the weather.